After years of incompetency, Mitch McConnell will step down as Republican leader at the end of the year. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video today. It is time that we talk about the great news that came out of the Senate just a couple days ago, because everyone, it is official. Mitch McConnell, yes, the turtle himself, is finally going to retire later this year. Listen, I don't care who you are, this should have been done four or five years ago, but hey, it is better late than never for him to retire. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah. Now, let's get right into it because finally, after years of begging and pleading, he finally decided, you know what, I am going to step down from my post in November. And he more than likely will not run for re-election because of this. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell will step down from the helm of the Republican conference this year, ending his time as the longest serving leader in Senate history. Yeah, Mitch McConnell is the longest serving leader in the history of the Senate. Of all the people that could have been the leader... It's Mitch McConnell. McConnell, who has served as GOP leader since 2007, made his announcement in a Senate floor speech Wednesday. An election to replace him as leader will occur in November, with the successor taking charge in January. Now, when they say the election is taking place in November, I hope they're saying, okay, it's after the general election. It's after the votes are counted. That's after, say, Bernie Moreno or Tim Shahi wins. It's just an example, you know? I hope that's the case and not, hey, it's going to be people like Mitt Romney that retired, but they're the ones making the decision for who the leader will be next year. I hope that's not what they mean, because if that's the case, we may end up with a downgrade over McConnell. One of life's most unappreciated talents is to know when it's time to move on to life's next chapter, so I stand before you today, Mr. President and my colleagues, to say this will be my last term as Republican leader of the Senate, McConnell said, adding his address that he had total clarity and peace about the sunset of my work. You know, I am not a fan of McConnell, but I am glad that even he realizes, okay, my health is not getting better, I'm getting older, why am I here? I'm glad he understands, you know what, I'm going to step down this November. Right after the election, I will not run for another term, at least as leader. More than likely, that means for the Senate, but you get the point that he understands at least, okay, I gotta go. It's not like Feinstein where she was forced out. In this situation, it seems like that while there might have been some, you know, people pushing for it, McConnell made the decision of, okay, I am going to step down in November. President Joe Biden, a longtime friend of McConnell's, despite their frequent sparring over politics, praised him in a statement, saying he was proud that they had been able to work together in good faith, even though they had many political disagreements. During his many years of leadership, we could always speak with each other honestly and put the country ahead of ourselves, Biden said. Eh, I may not go that far, but I'll give McConnell the credit where it's due that, hey, he realized it's time to step down. Colleagues regard McConnell as an effective political tactician and one of the most influential lawmakers in Washington. With then-President Trump, McConnell helped enact a sweeping $1.5 trillion tax package in 2017. And let me be clear about one thing. I am not the biggest fan of McConnell, but a couple of years ago from like 2016 to 2020, he was actually a good leader. He got shit done, and when we needed the votes, he was, most of the time, able to come up with it. But McConnell's most consequential legacy dates to his extraordinary decision in 2016 to refuse to let President Barack Obama fill a vacant Supreme Court seat. And this really changed history. This changed the course of American politics in a very good fashion. Without McConnell doing this, we would have never 
been able to overturn Roe versus Wade. You don't got to like McConnell to understand from 2016 to 2020, he did stuff like this. He absolutely was a, politically speaking, a decent leader at the time. He went on to shepherd three conservative Supreme Court nominees, Neil Gorsuch, Brad Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, through the Senate under Trump's presidency, creating the most right-leaning court in nearly a century and reshaping American law. That court overturned Roe v. Wade in June of 2022, ending the national right to abortion, among many other decisions, which you still gotta give Trump credit for, you know, winning the presidency and, you know, being able to fill those spots. But McConnell did help getting those justices through. He did help prevent Obama from picking another Supreme Court justice. That is what he did when he was at his peak. He was effective at getting justices through, no matter the cost, no matter how, why, when, doesn't matter. He got them through. There are some pretty major victories that the two men together accomplished, and neither one of them could have done, probably without the other, said Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota. But McConnell's once formidable influence over the Senate GOP has dimmed over the last year as the conference becomes more aligned with Trump, who has a famously frosted relationship with McConnell and recently said he didn't think he could work with them if he's re-elected president. Trump and McConnell haven't spoken in more than three years, hitting a breaking point with a January 6, 2021 attack on the Capitol. McConnell voted to acquit Trump in the impeachment trial that followed, but he gave a scathing speech on the Senate floor saying Trump was practically and morally responsible for provoking the events of the day. And really this and the whole stimulus checks, that's when McConnell fell off the freaking map. I mean, this guy went from, you know, he wasn't the best on the issues. He was more of an establishment Republican, but he still helped Trump get his agenda through to orange man bad. Not as bad as, say, Mitt Romney, but ever since then, it just, it's been pathetic. Still, Aides of both top Republicans have recently held discussions, including an effort to get McConnell to endorse Trump for re-election. The Republican conference has recently broke with McConnell on matters like Ukraine aid and a, quote, bipartisan border security deal, and his critics had promised he would face a challenge if he sought to run again for the leader position. And this is one of the other big reasons he dropped out. Yes, I think his health is the biggest reason. I mean, let's face it. If it wasn't for Feinstein or Biden... He, everyone would talk about McConnell much more. People do, but he's not a good health at all. He's not getting any younger, and really, he lost the conference. So what's the point of continuing after this year? The race for a successor is expected to begin immediately with the three Johns. Senate Minority Leader Whip John Thune of South Dakota, the number three Republican Senator John Bros of Wyoming, and former GOP Whip Senator John Cornyn of Texas, widely expected to run for the position. Now, none of these three are, you know, the best in the Senate. I, I mean, John Brasso is probably the best. I mean, he's not a bad senator, but he's kind of just a generic guy from Wyoming. He's not an S-tier type, but he's more like a high C-tier. You know, like C+, plus, maybe a B-. minus. Now, as for the other two, they're not good. I mean, John Thune, he's just a younger version of McConnell. That's not good. I mean, 20 years younger. Can you imagine having to deal with this guy for 20 years? That would not be good. But he's just a lateral. There's no difference between him and McConnell. Maybe he's slightly better because he endorsed Trump, but that's about it. But John Cornyn, oh boy. This guy right here is the downgrade. He would be worse than McConnell. That's how bad John Cornyn is. I mean... He's a gun grabber from Texas. Do I have to say anything more? Can you imagine this bozo being the leader? He sucks on guns, immigration, everything. There's not a single issue he's good at. And he's from Texas. I plan to support John, joked Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. Yeah, there's three Johns running. I wonder which one. It's more than likely John Brasso, who, again... He's not an S-tier type, but, you know, he's like a B-tier. Solid, but not perfect. And I think he is the best option of these three. Thune is the favorite to replace McConnell, given that he's well-regarded by colleagues and the number two GOP leader. But while he endorsed Trump in recent days, 
Thunes also clashed with the former president and likely GOP 2024 nominee, a fact that could complicate the senator's bid for the top job. That could provide an opening for either Barrasso, who is more aligned with Trump, or Cornyn, a former number two leader under McConnell and a prolific fundraiser. None of the three Johns announced their bids Wednesday, allowing McConnell to have his day. Well, now we know John Cornyn is officially in. I don't see him getting a single vote. I really don't. Outside of maybe someone like Murkowski or Susan Collins, there's no one that's going to vote for this guy, especially if Thune is running. I mean, John Thune, he has the support of McConnell's people. While Brasso, he's going to have the support of Trump's people, unless someone else enters, which I don't see happening. It's really between Thune and Brasso. Cornyn's just a meme. He's not going to get much support, if any. I mean, who wants to support Cornyn? The best of the three is Brasso, while most of McConnell's people are just behind Thune. So why is Cornyn running? I have no clue. I don't think he expects to win people like J.D. Vance over. Now, how do I think this will go? Sadly, I think we end up with John Thune, but you never know. John Brosso is the number three Republican, and he is well-liked from everything we know. And the thing with Thune, he's pissed off Trump so much that eh, even if he endorsed Trump, he may not want to support him for Senate leader. He may want to support someone that's loyal like Brasso. Plus, we don't know what the class will look like next year. I mean, if they vote under the current Senate where people like Mitt Romney can vote, yeah. You're going to end up with someone like Thune or hell, even Cornyn. But if you end up with next year's class of someone like Bernie Moreno, Jim Justice, or whoever, well, that gives Barrasso a much easier pathway to becoming leader. But we got to see what happens. Hopefully he can pull it off because we cannot have John Thune be the Senate leader next year. That, That would be a disaster waiting to happen. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Thank you so much. Godspeed to all of you.